Hi there, I'm Simon Crompton from PermanentStyle.com. Uh, today I'm joined by Alex Svetkovic from the podcast Handcut Radio. And in this series of videos, we are answering some reader questions from the website. Um, in each one, Alex is bringing in a question that someone has asked recently on Permanent Style, putting it to me, and then we're trying to address it and answer it from every angle we can. So Alex, uh, what's our question today? Question today is, I am building up a wardrobe from scratch. Okay. Um, what do I buy first and how much should I spend? Oh, yeah, big question. Big question. Um, I guess in terms of the actual specifics on everything you should buy, um, you know, which jacket and trousers and shirts and shoes and everything else, it's very dependent on actually your lifestyle and office. You mm -hmm. know, you might be in an office where everyone's wearing a suit and tie every day. Um, or in one where everyone's wearing a t-shirt and jeans, you just want to be a little bit smarter, for example. Um, and then all the details on what exactly you should buy is basically the entire content of Permanent Style. Like, there's a lot of information there. But if you kind of stick at the, uh, maybe at the level of kind of principles to start with, mm -hmm. um, then I'd say, you know, first thing is maybe look at how much you should spend. You want to buy the best quality you can afford, but it's quality over, you know, a decent length of time. You know, you're, this is a project to get a wardrobe within you know, three, four, five years. So what can you realistically spend on, you know, okay, year one, I want like, you know, a good suit, a good pair of shoes, a couple of good shirts, you know, maybe an odd pair of trousers, for example. How much really can I spend on all of that? And therefore, you know, what level should I be buying at? So, it's almost, so it almost becomes, I guess, a, a, something that I'm absolutely useless at, which is a, which is a, a planning exercise, you know, a long-term kind of strategy to kind of develop, yeah. your, develop your wardrobe and develop your personal style. Yeah, I think even just, even just at a very, very rough level, um, you know, working, you may be that six months time, halfway through that first year plan, you change because you find someone you really like or you get something on sale or whatever it might be. But just work out roughly how much that is and then you know, okay, am I, say I'm getting a bespoke jacket, am I kind of pitching at a kind of high street made to measure kind of level of sort of six, seven, eight hundred pounds? Mm -hmm. Or am I picking a kind of a, a low, like high made to measure, low bespoke, sort of like 1500 to 2500? Um, or actually, can I afford if I only do one thing a year to really kind of be the Savile Row top bespoke that might be 4000 plus or something? Sure. You know? so, so actually, it, uh, I think, I, well, I think that's quite an interesting point, really, that, that we're talking about understanding different levels of what you can afford, but I think there's there's a lot of kind of uh, menswear snobbery in this yeah. in this little bubble yeah. that we Absolutely. inhabit. And actually, there's nothing wrong with going right. In the next six months, I am going to save up and I'm going to spend nine hundred pounds on a, a made-to-measure product through I don't know through a German street label as opposed to. Yeah. You know, punching in at five k on Savile Row. There's nothing wrong with no, that. No, absolutely not. And particularly so. given that you know, as we're both aware, and this reader is probably aware, like you're starting from a very low point. You know, most people out there are buying ready to wear and not even having it altered so it fits better. You yeah. know, so even by just having something made to measure, you should be a level above that. You know, so you're already achieving something, and, and you're thinking about it more. You're planning for it more. You're not buying something which is just extremely fashionable, kind of right now. Mm -hmm. So you're already kind of doing pretty well and be better than 90% of people out there. And actually, as we've already discussed in this little video series, uh, it is very easy to make expensive mistakes yeah. when you are ordering made to measure and bespoke. So actually, there's nothing wrong. In fact, it's probably advisable to start small yeah. and take your time if you can, if you can bear it. Because yeah. again, I have made the mistake of just dumping stupid amounts of money into clothes very quickly, yeah. uh, which never works. Um, you know, if you can take your time to really shape your wardrobe and think about it strategically, yeah. that makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So coming down a level then, uh, where would you start in terms of individual pieces? Okay, so well, let's try and narrow it down a bit, a bit more specific. So say, you, let's assume our reader is uh, working in an office which is not suit and tie every day, mm -hmm. but is also not like t-shirt and jeans and therefore they can have a little bit of flexibility, you can dress up a little bit. Yeah. So maybe they're going to be wearing, you know, uh, a nice open neck shirt, a jacket, and then either jeans or flannels, for example, as trousers, something like that. Yeah. So I'd say first thing is probably like a navy jacket. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great thing to invest in. 
it can seem quite formal and smart, but actually if you have it in a relatively soft cut, in like a wool rather really kind of smart cashmere, it can be the kind of thing that you can dress down with like a t-shirt or knitwear underneath, you can dress it up with a shirt and a tie, you can wear it with like you know, some light fade jeans for example, yeah. there's so many kind of different things you can kind of put that with. And uh, more than probably any other colour of, of jacket, right? Yeah, completely. And I think um, what I would say to to those people viewing this that might be thinking, oh, a navy jacket sounds quite boring mm. or quite corporate, mm. which I used to think when oh, I really? first started getting into clothes. Yeah. I actually didn't get a blazer for, till, for, for years into my kind of... Because it seemed too corporate. Because it seemed too corporate, which mm. was the most one of the most stupid decisions I've ever made. Um, you know, a, a, a blazer is such a beautiful classic, timeless, blank canvas to yeah. build your wardrobe around. Mm. Um, you know, you can have double-breasted brass buttons, very structured. You can play with the structure. You can have lovely red uh, kind of ruby horn on there. There's lots of things you can do to make that blazer your own. Yeah. And then, yes, you can do something very, very kind of formal and English and wear it with rep stripe ties yeah. and uh, starch collars and car keys and all the rest of it. But you can wear it with a denim shirt underneath, you can wear it with white jeans, mm. light jeans, which you've said. Yeah. You can pop the collar, turn back the cuffs, wear it with crazy panelled shirts underneath. Like you just, you know, it's a tool to have fun. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a really natural start point. And I would encourage people not to do what I did, which is keep going, oh, I'll order that next time. Yeah. And then I'll get my mad check. It's just less first. exciting, isn't it? Like it's so much more exciting. And that's why I admire people who are actually taking this approach and stick with it, actually building up a wardrobe and mm -hmm. stick with it for more than say six months or a year, because it takes a lot of patience. It's very satisfying in the end. And you look back, I, actually, I find it easier with shoes for some reason. I find it, even though shoes is an area, another area where people often get things that are very exciting and kind of bright colors. And mm -hmm. my first ever pair of really expensive shoes was from Corte and they're just, <laughs> I mean, they're lovely, but they don't fit. You can't wear them, and they're, you know, they, they're, they're very showy. Are they purple, Simon? No, they're just brown, they're brown leather and brown suede, but they're just, it's just a bit pointy and a bit showy. Yeah. And, um, but actually, yeah, with shoes, you can, you start, if you can control yourself enough to get like, you know, dark brown loafers, dark brown Oxfords, whatever, you look back after like two or three years and go, actually, those shoes are... Still working for me. Really nice. They go with everything else you've got. You know, they're looking better, actually, the more you look after them and the mm. more you wear them, which is really nice. Mm. I think, I mean, that... Yeah, so that patience, I think, is really impressive. And I had a, someone come in recently for like a personal consultancy session on exactly this kind of topic. And it was just, you know, fantastically planned out. Um, to think about all the different areas they could go into. Um, the two pieces of advice that I kind of remember most strongly giving that person right at the beginning was, um, one, that point about controlling your kind of expenditure, because I think they were assuming that they would kind of get almost everything that we talked about on permanent style. And that means often you're just talking, you're going shooting for the very top level of quality immediately. Yeah. And you don't necessarily need that, you know, most of the time. And I think the other thing was to stay with core items because <laughs> this person, when, you, when they're trying to kind of plan out the whole wardrobe, you suddenly go, oh, but how about a scarf? Or what gloves should I get? Or what umbrella? And all these other things. And oh, what hats? And it's like, just, that's, just leave that. Yeah, you know? you're not there yet. No, they can sort those things out on their own. You can get those anytime you want. It's absolutely fine. But you just want those core things that you can work around, mm. which I guess is like you know, jacket, shirts, trousers and shoes, maybe yeah. your coat. But those kind of core things, I guess. And actually coming back to kind of this blazer as a start point, you know, if you start with the blazer, mm. you can then kind of do three or four things immediately in, in the following months that really give or give you a wardrobe pretty quickly yeah, yeah, if yeah. patience is an issue, which it yeah. is for me, for yeah, example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can kind of go, all right, colourful cords here, sensible grey flannels, just the quintessential good grey flannels, yeah. and then a really, really serious pair of jeans. Yeah. Like my first proper pair of Japanese selvage, yeah. beautifully cut, imported jeans from a cult brand. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got that there, and then you can mm -hmm. kind of go, right, the perfect cream roll neck, the perfect denim shirt, the perfect blue button down. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point. Isn't it? That's that's almost the biggest argument for playing safe is the fact that if you play safe, those safe items go with almost every other thing. Yeah. So actually, if you're trying to have the patience, you know it's going to be hard because you care so much about clothes. It's going to be hard to buy slowly over time. The best way to do that is start with those safe things because you can then branch out very quickly to other stuff. And Completely. Like you say, within you know, a few purchases, you've actually got quite a lot of different looks there. I think yeah. that's all quite exciting. Yeah. You know? And that's when, you know, if you do that in year one, yeah. then all of a sudden in year two, you can go, okay, right, now I'm 
getting that mad tweed yeah. because I've got the grey flannels and the blue button down yeah. that will sit under the mad tweed. Yeah. And I know I've got two other things over here where that works as well. Yeah, yeah that's very true. I think it's um, another thing I'd say about the kind of accessories like scarves and hats or other things is it's much easier to use those to like freshen up a fairly kind of standard and classic core wardrobe. You know, once you've got those kind of basic things in the middle of it, you can go actually be shopping and go, I really like that dark green polka dot scarf or something like that. And actually suddenly everything else looks fresher because you have that, that new thing, yeah. you know, but it's much easier to do this, slightly cheaper usually, um, and accessories kind of, you know, around the edges of it. So it doesn't have to do with the really core things, um, which is a lot less exciting because people get much more excited about getting a Prince of Wales three-piece suit or something. But that is, the, that is again, the sensible thing to do, isn't it? Because, because having a freshen up with a 120 pound scarf is a lot less expensive than, <laughs> exactly. than, than going mental with a three-piece flannel suit that yeah. you're gonna wear once a year, yeah. if you're lucky. And a, che and a cheaper mistake if you do get the wrong one as well, because it is yeah. quite, because if you're getting things that are a bit more exciting and a bit more unusual, there's a greater chance either they're gonna be like a bit too fashion led or just a bit too unusual and you love them for a year and then kind of go off them, but yeah. it's, it's a much smaller thing, so. It, it's interesting to me, this is a little bit of a segue, that, that in this, this little three part series, we keep coming back to, without even really talking about it, to this idea of smart casual. Yeah. And of this, we, we aren't really talking about suits anymore. We're no. talking about separates and open collars. Yeah and knitwear, yeah. um, and I think that's something to keep in mind as well, which is that while we are all admirers of, of quote, classic style, yeah. you know, life today is just less formal. Yeah. And as you build that wardrobe, mm. you, you will get infinitely greater degrees of wear out of these practical, sensible, hybrid pieces that we've talked yeah. about. Yeah, very true. Than, yeah. than going all in and going, right, the first thing I buy is a three-piece flannel suit with a teal over check in it. <laughs> you know, it's teal. just... Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's almost like if there's a spectrum of the kind of smart to uh, the casual, like, but hitting stuff that's more in that kind of middle area, yeah. you're going to be able to more like to go one direction or the other. Completely. You know? And actually, right, and also interesting in the three videos again, like we haven't worn like a worsted suit or jacket the entire time. It's all things you could wear with other stuff as well. Between us. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. right? It's all things you could wear in different ways, smart or casual, depending on kind of what you put with them in exactly the same way. Yeah. Um, I think one last point I make about this as well is I think sometimes it's really useful to think about this wardrobe building exercise um, and the parallels it has with travel, for example, mm -hmm. because when you're trying to put together a small group of clothes to take traveling, you often have the same kind of challenges. It's like, okay, I've got to take a limited number of clothes. They've got to deal with a certain number of situations. And I, it's funny, I almost find on the website, people ask questions about like a capsule wardrobe and about a travel wardrobe in the same area because you're covering the same things. It's like, it's got to be conservative. I've got to be able to wear these different things together. Okay, I can like really take like two pairs of shoes. So those shoes have got to work with every outfit in there. So therefore they've both got to basically be a dark brown or whatever it is. Sure. So much safer from that point of view. So right. it's almost like if you imagine yourself traveling in some way, and then what is that kind of collection of clothes? Yeah, what, nice what works when you're on the move? Yeah. What works in different contexts? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, completely, mm. completely. Very interesting. Mm. Um, that's, I, I have nothing further to add. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, I have one question. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe a question to you, Let's turn the tables a second. Go on. I know you're a big fan of dark brown, for example, which you talked about before. Yeah. Do you think, in terms of colors, we still, we both agree that like a navy jacket is, you know, extremely useful still, even with kind of smart or casual things. Mm. Would you say like a dark brown is the next most useful color? Trousers, um, I jackets, would, I wouldn't coats say, even. I wouldn't say uh, dark brown is. I have okay. a preference for, I, I love chocolate brown because I think it's a really sophisticated color for tailoring. Mm -hmm. No one ever chooses it. It's far less corporate than gray and it's more interesting than navy. So mm -hmm. if, if I was going to sit down with someone and they had a skin tone that suited it, I would say sort your navy yeah. suit, blazer and suit then let's look at an interesting brown. Yeah. Because my issue with, I, I honestly believe, and this is probably gonna get me chucked out of the menswear community, I believe that gray is best kept for trousers today. Mm -hmm. I, I, a gray flannel suit, everyone says it's the classic, it's lovely, it's an elegant thing. It is, mm -hmm. but it feels far too period for me today. Yeah, that's interesting, you isn't know, it? A gray, yeah. a gray suit is a business suit. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but, but what I, to, to answer your question, I think taupe, wheat, kind of earthy colours, yeah. mid-level earthy colours. I think you've written about how you love oatmeal for sports coats yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. That kind of colour 
uh, color palette feels really wearable today yeah. because again it sits in that sweet spot between smart and casual yeah you know a, a softly structured oatmeal sports coat with a bit of texture running through it or in yeah. a herringbone or whatever double denim underneath or knitwear and a nice pair of dark jeans or charcoal flannels and an open button down shirt you know it's so wearable so we're kind of going it like there's almost like there's a first tier of like your navies and greys next below that is ones that are a bit more natural and warmer, like kind of dark browns and dark greens. But as you're saying, stay within that brown area, but then do variations on it in terms of light and dark. And actually those will all play really nicely together. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. All right, thanks very much, Alex. Pleasure. Sure. For more practical information and reviews of artisans, check out permanentstyle.com, the UK's leading website on craft and classic style.